This video presented by Phoenix Rising. Tweaking the MX9644 image tube. Today we're going to be taking apart an MX9644 image tube from the mid-1980s and seeing if we can give it a little performance boost. When I won this Tasco NV250 on Flea Bay, I didn't realize that it had an MX9644 tube in it. All I knew was that it was a Gen 2 device and I got it for pretty cheap. That being said, when I got it home and I realized what it was, I also discovered that it was performing about 20% lower than my other MX9644 based devices. I left it as is for quite a while, but then just recently I decided, what the heck, let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see if we can give it a performance bump. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Now, this is a disclaimer that I, I'm not a repair technician. I'm just a guy tearing this stuff apart and seeing what I can come up with and what you're going to watch as the results. So if you decide to do this on your own, you are on your own because uh, I make no warranty or claims that uh, your experience will be the same as mine. So please proceed at your own risk. Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to tweak on a MX9644 image tube. Now, uh, I'm not an expert, I'm not a night vision repair guy, so this is uh, just my messing around with the inside of one of these and kind of explaining to you what I think things do and what I did to adjust it. Uh, so it's a do at your own risk sort of deal. And if somebody is watching and they know exactly what all four of these do, uh, all four of these pots when we get inside here, please put something down in the comment section because uh, I'm all ears. So, all that being said, this is our subject device. This is an older MX9644 based device that I got on Flea Bay a few years back. Uh, this is a Tasco NV250. So, you know, you know if it's Tasco, it's got to be top quality, right? <laughs> Radio Shack. Uh, I don't know if this was actually sold by Radio Shack, but I can, this looks like something that might be a real early Radio Shack adventure. Anyway, uh, MX9644 image tube in it. When I got this device, what, what I found was that based on two other examples that I had of MX9644 tubes, this thing was about 20% lower in performance. Uh, I know it had a, I figured out it had an MX9644 in it because one of the first things I did was pull the lens off the front and looked, and I recognized it because I'd already seen those tubes uninstalled. And then I also cleaned the glass because if you get any older night vision, uh, that the you know if you can if you can take the lens out, clean the sensor, front of the sensor, clean the back of the lens, get any haze off of there, uh, as well as your front objective lens that will greatly improve your performance, give you a much better image quality, and the same thing on the back, but not to this, as high a degree. So anyway, clean your glass if you can get to it. That's uh, always a good thing to do. Now, uh, that being said, uh, this thing's kind of unique. Uh, I believe it's built by ATN because this little switch pack was very common on early ATN Gen 1 devices where you can select, it's like a digital uh, fancy adjustment instead of knobs press the button and you can adjust, uh, it has a green and a yellow light on the back, I don't know if you can see it as I'm cycling these. Green light adjusts brightness and the yellow adjusts the illuminator which by default is on when you turn it on. I don't like that it's because I always end up turning it off. Uh, so it has those adjustments and this thing has this wide viewing lens in the back, you actually put your face in the rubber, these rubber flaps go to either side of your face, nose in the cutout and you have this real wide view screen to look at this tube, the back of this tube with both your eyes, which is kind of neat, kind of a unique design. It's big, it's heavy, but uh, again, this is 1980s, okay? Uh, and I know that because when I had this apart, the warranty on the image tube ran out in 1988. So, uh, so anyway, so this was probably built in the mid 80s. Uh, all that being said, We'll go ahead, we'll take it apart. I was successful in getting the tube out with no problems, disassembling the tube with no problems. And there's some caveats to doing all that uh, that I've discovered before 
uh, in trying to work on stuff. So uh, we'll go over all that, we'll tweak the pots, we'll do a cause and effect, and uh, what the end result is that this thing it went from being about 20% below in performance from my other two devices to where now it's actually operating in between them. And that's a pretty substantial gain for just a little bit of time and fiddling. So uh, let's go ahead, go inside, look, see what we have, and I'll show you what I did. For those of you who know, and this is, looks all screwed up because I've got it disassembled, and I'll take some pictures of it reassembled. This has four input pins. This is an MX9644. Now it's potted. All this is a dielectric compound in the back, or dielectric high, however you say it. My pronunciation on stuff's screwed up in case you haven't noticed. I do a lot of reading, but I don't necessarily pronounce things right. So anyway, this would thread on the back, and there's a completed MX9644 tube. Now, if you've seen my other videos, right? It's, you, you, it's obvious that, you know, I've said this is a big honking device, you know. Modern tubes are about maybe this big around, about this long, 18 millimeter input window. This is a big tube. It's also an inverter tube. So instead of having a fiber optic twist to make this screen right, it actually magnetically inverts it inside the tube, which is a larger, older style technology. <coughs> okay, so this is MX9644. In this case, this thing, warranted item, warranty ex, uh, expires on September 30th, 1988. Okay, so older tube, same technology, again, same stuff that went in a PVS4. But I, originally I thought, okay, Tasco, uh, probably a sub whatever grade tube that wasn't, you know, commercial tube versus a military grade tube. Well, looking at all these part numbers and stuff, kind of makes me doubtful of that. I mean, the condition's good, uh, real good quality image as far as no blemishes or none of that crap. So anyway, uh, last night I tore this thing apart because I thought, you know what, maybe I can tweak on this and make this perform more like what I'm used to. So this is the inside of this unit, big heavy aluminum housing. It's got an illuminator built into it here, right? Battery compartment power switch which the top of that's missing but that's okay it still works and this weird device here that's like a proximity sensor to turn the thing on or off when your face is near it okay uh, it's got this as a control panel it actually had this cover over this the lights would have been in the back here it says SL minus and plus okay now this thing says ATN all over it okay and I'll show you why in just a moment but basically the red LED doesn't work, it doesn't come on, it's not used in this implementation. So this also had to be used on some night vision scopes, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, so you have a select button that changes the function and an up and down. Real simple controls. This is a metal, look at that, that's a metal a machine cover. I mean, you know, back in the day they built stuff better. Plastic, you know, this wasn't plastic. Uh, so what it is is the green light, when you're in that mode, that's your tube brightness. Yellow light bright is illuminator brightness and I don't like it because when you turn this on the illuminator is automatically on you got to go in get mash the button get it to uh, yellow or orange light on press it down or hold it until you finally get the illuminator off and I don't like turning I don't like illuminators unless I need them on let me choose that but I didn't I never cared for that function but anyway that's the way it's built uh, there is one little pot on here uh, right here, and I did try tweaking on that. That didn't get me any performance gain. Now I'm going to show you something, and this is another one. Looks kind of similar. SL plus minus green. Oops, some green, yellow, red LEDs. This came off of an old Gen 1 ATN scope. I think it was a Mark 258 or something. I got it and paid a little bit for it. It was crappy. The the tube I think was pretty much shot when I got it. But anyway, this is a circuitry off of that same functionality everything that tells me this is all ATN okay so enough of that so it's an ATN marketed by Tasco Gen 2 MX9644 now because the performance on this was lower than my other Gen 2 MX9644 tubes right what I decided to do first was I took it apart and but in the past I'd never pulled this tube out I just looked at it and said hmm yeah 9644 or commercial something like it Last night, I actually pulled the tube all the way out, took it apart, disassembled this thing further, and they got all the markings and everything else, and I thought, okay, 
let's uh, see if there's anything inside. Well, I tweaked on this little pot down here, didn't get nowhere. Then I thought, okay, well, maybe it's the way they implemented this. They limited its performance for longevity or who knows what. Or, yada, yada. sorry, I boofed. Uh, so let's talk about our, our little gain assembly. All this is all the wiring you need for, for an MX9644, okay? If you get an MX9644 tube and you want to have manual gain and operate it without risk of damaging it, uh, at least from your own wiring, all you need is four leads, four pins, you need a 3 volt battery source, 470k ohm resistor, and a 0 to 50k pot. And this is wired pretty much the way uh, everything, the way, the way it's supposed to be. And uh, maybe I'll show a picture out of the uh, military, the Army's old tech manual that shows the wiring to it. But anyway, that, this is all you need. All, these other devices I've got that I've built, both of them have manual gains, and they're both are just using a 50k pot and a 470k resistor. Uh, simple as that easy peasy. So anyway, I hooked this up and I really didn't get any change in brightness on the tube or anything. Kind of unscientifically tested it. So I thought today we'll take this thing apart and maybe I can tweak on the pots and amp this thing up a little bit. It's, a, it's an old tube. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. So I thought, what the hell, right? What the hell? Let's go ahead and do that. So that's where we're at. Uh, I will do some finish put back together because I'm fairly confident that I can do this and if I, I may not get any gains out of it, or I might get a more functional device, but I'm confident I can take this thing apart, tinker with it, and put it back together because I've already torn these apart and, and with varying levels of success. So I have a good idea what I'm doing for a, uh, for a shade tree mechanic. So let's go ahead. I'll stop the video. I'll take this apart the rest of the way. And actually, actually, let me show you something while I'm doing it because I've already started. You can see I've pulled these pins off. If you ever get one of these tubes, unless you're willing to take it all the way apart, do not pull the screws out of your pins. Made that mistake once and, and fought with it for a long time because I was afraid to take it apart. These go to wires that are tucked up in here. Okay, I don't know if we can get, a, get this. I'll try and get a picture of it if I can't show you here. Okay, see down in there? Now those little wires have uh, little, you know, captive, uh, they have uh, threaded pieces on the back for you to screw to, but they're not held in place by anything. So you take the screw off of there, that wire is going to shift inside because it's made to be moved around and taken apart and put together like it is right here. And then you're pretty much going to have to, unless, you, unless it's just about lined up and you get really lucky, you are going to have to disassemble this to put it back on. So unless you plan on going all the way, do not take these screws out of the pins on an MX9644. So, because that's what it looks like on the inside. And basically you pull the wires up, you attach your pins with the tube partially out, and then put the tube all the way in. That's the way, that's the way these go. So don't do that unless you want to do this. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Okay, we're back, and that was quick and easy. Now, in case you're wondering, I did mark down what wires went to what pins before I did this crap, okay? And that's true even, even on the wiring inside of our housing here. You may not be able to see it, but this is where the, this is where the housing wiring goes on to this thing. They weren't color-coded, but I used my markers and color-coded them and wrote down what, what went to what. Just so as I go through the process, I uh, don't end up screwing things up or forgetting and then frying something or just having a more making myself having a have a difficult time so here you go see what I'm saying how this stuff will fall apart on the inside so don't take those off unless you plan on going all the way okay now uh, let me flip this over and we'll just uh, I can't even have to uh, flip it I thought I had it right there you go so here you go NYTEC QEC it gives you some uh, code serial numbers this is all the amplifier circuitry to provide the different voltages and whatnot necessary to uh, to operate this this device. Now, if you'll notice, there are four potentiometers here. Okay, or variable. They're saying R, so I'm going to say they're probably variable resistors. Uh, maybe potentiometers isn't the right word. And of course, there's your output leads, and and this is true even on your newer tubes. Your, normally all your high voltage uh, stuff goes around the outside of the tube and it's all epoxied or sealed in an enclosure, okay? A high voltage enclosure because you get some pretty, 
pretty hefty voltages and I can't remember off the top of my head uh, what they are although I have uh, I, I do have somewhere I've got some documentation on this tube and, it, <laughs> and yeah when you're when you're oh that's the other thing you power this thing up and you start messing with it I will tell you this don't touch the pins be careful what you touch because this thing will light your tail up it won't at very low amperage but very high voltage okay very low amperage obviously because we're running for 30 hours on it on a couple of CR123 batteries or whatever or a couple of double A's so anyway uh, that's what the inside of the tube looks like now I'm gonna play with this thing and I'm gonna see if I maybe I could research it and find something to tell me what uh, what goes to what and another thing is I'm gonna be very careful not to damage the potting on this because this is what gives you electrical insulation and reliability, some shock resistance, everything else. So I'm just going to be, I'm going to treat this with care and see what I can come up with. And uh, if I figure something out, I'll come back and we'll talk about it. If not, who knows? Maybe it works, maybe it won't. Okay, so I just wanted to share my first little stumbling block or hurdle here in doing this. See all these very fine wires? Well, you know, solder gets old, wires get brittle. Uh, as I was trying to connect the pins so I could pin this back up to the original circuitry to test it and see what I can accomplish, what I found was that just by moving it around a little bit and trying to get these pins screwed on separately, all that wiggling, three out of the four wires broke off the back of uh, broke off from their little separate pin holder so I had to go and solder all four of these right back on so first little hurdle but I've got this assembled for testing so uh, there you have it so if you do mess with this keep in mind a lot of this stuff it's older uh, you may find that things are brittle cold solder joints things like that you take it apart and uh, again a real good reason to document what color wires go where uh, because stuff may come apart and if you didn't make note of it then you're really hating it so there you go Okay, so here we have our MX9644 out of its out of its protective shell and up close and personal prior to trying to see if we can't maybe get a little bit more performance out of this, okay? So, uh, in taking a look at this, again, this is all potted uh, because this is this thing operates on high voltage. So, as I'm tweaking on this, I want to make sure I don't touch any of these terminals because they'll light me up. <laughs> not not life-threatening, but but not fun. I sound like I've done that before maybe mm, yeah kind of sorta anyway uh, so this is all the amplifier and the gain circuitry and everything else now if you'll notice this is in two pieces you have uh, this side and then there's a split and they where they and you see a piece of tapes there to make sure they don't kind of slip out but they're uh, friction fit four pins four or five pins are going across here uh, to make the complete amplifier uh, setup now uh, one other thing I've done here, and look, did one fall off already? Yeah, one fell off for me working. That's the only one I that, that's the only one that didn't fall off earlier that I had to solder. Dang it! That's how I'm going to have to solder that back on now too. But uh, that's okay. Anyway, so here are your four pots, right? And what I've done was, if you can see up close, each one of the screws they, so they kind of have a little bit of raised bumps on one side of the slot. So what I did was, I on one side I marked either side of the slot. And I put a mark on the casing or the housing for each one of these potentiometers, so that I can, uh, so that when I, as I'm doing this, if I if I mess with something and it doesn't do anything, then I can put it back to its original position. And if I mess with something and I get somewhere, then I can also kind of gauge how much I tweaked it, you know, uh, and then I can share that with you. So, uh, but any any time you're going to mess with a pot on something like that. It's always a good idea. My magic markers are fine tip magic markers. Your friend mark the hell out of it so you can put it back to where you found it. So anyway, there you have it. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this off and go. Okay, here we are. Time to tweak on an image tube. Uh, now before I show you some of the process, I'll let you know that I spent an, over an hour tweaking on this tube, trying to figure out everything, and I'm just going to show you a portion of that. Uh, the process I did was uh, I put a piece of tape across the front input window so that I had dark and light areas so I could see contrast on the uh, back of the tube. Then I went through all four pots at 
minimum external gain, medium external gain, and full external gain to see what the cause and effect was. Uh, when I did that process, I ended up eliminating R3 and R4 from being anything that I wanted to mess with. The reason for that was R3 would make the image turn dark uh, and get it up to the right level, but not really go much beyond that. So I think that was kind of like an incoming voltage setting. At any rate, it didn't have a, much of a cause and effect, so I left it where it was. R4 changed the diameter of the display on the rear uh, phosphor screen of the image tube. So that, to me, that either had something to do with uh, focus or, uh, or maybe the inversion process of which there wasn't a problem of in the first place. So I left R4 exactly where it was. Now that leaves us to R1 and R2. Now, uh, when I went through this process at minimum, medium, and full gain, R2 would brighten and dim the image equally no matter where I had the external gain at. So it's like a global overall brightness to brightness setting, okay? Uh, R1, on the other hand, had very little impact at minimum gain and at maximum gain had a dramatic impact. Now, uh, so basically, I looked at this the same way I would look at, say, a pressure transmitter or calibrating something like that where you have, you set your zero, wherever you set your zero, that impact impacts everything across the range. Uh, then you have a span that adjusts your, gets your maximum where it needs to be and it piggybacks off of your your global or your zero. So uh, that being said, what I did was I went to minimum gain, I adjusted R2 uh, to get the brightness that I wanted for a minimum gain. And, and I didn't bump it up a lot as you can see from the pictures, but, uh, but I bumped it up a little bit to get a better brightness at minimum gain. Then I went to maximum gain and then adjusted R1 up a little bit and what I wanted to do was, okay, I wasn't so concerned with the brightness, but where I'd put the tape across the front of the input window, I wanted to get a, some brightness behind that. I didn't want it to be pitch black. I wanted to, to be able to pull some, a little bit of amplification, increase the amplification there out to pull out shadow detail when the tube's in use. So that's exactly what I did. I bumped up R2 a little bit or R R2 a little bit at the bottom, went up to the top, bumped up R1 to get a little less in the contrast a little bit, get a little more uh, brightness uh, in the shadows or dark areas, went back down to the bottom and found that my tweaking on R1 did have a little bit of an impact, so I moved R2 down just a hair to get it back to what I set it at, and then that was it. That was the whole process. So I increased overall brightness. I increased uh, brightness in the shadows at the top end of the tube's performance, but not by a huge amount and call it a day. So that's it. Let's watch a little bit of this process. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And then we'll go outside and uh, kind of see how this thing performs. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've tweaked it up and down on all four of these pots. Okay, R3, and we're just going to do this. I've got a piece of tape across the front end of this with some ambient light in the room to just kind of show relative brightness and everything else. So what we'll do is we'll step through all four of the pots, and I'll tell you what, I'm, what I've done and what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, first we're going to R1. Everything's set to neutral the way it was uh, when I pulled it apart. And gains all the way up on this device. Okay, so when I mess with R1, you can see I'm going clockwise up, and that is brightening up the area behind the tape. Okay, so that would be your pitch black, the darkness of your pitch black, kind of. Okay, and if I take it down, it does impact everything at the high end. Now, when I was at the bottom end, this thing really, this really didn't do much. Okay, when I had this thing gained down, uh, didn't R1 didn't do much, but it affects the high end, okay, and the shadow detail. Now, R2 is global, okay. I at the bottom end, it still affects it. Now it's neutral. Now you can see I can go brighter on this tube, and it brightens up the whole scene. Now that's as bright as it goes, and I can also tweak it way down to where uh, just about off, okay. So. R2 globally affects your brightness and all that. Now R4, we got it set to high brightness. R4, see how it's changing the size of your image circle? I don't know if you can see that real good. But to me, that R4 has to do with your image focus or this maybe this inverter process. But that's all it's doing is changing that size of that spot a little bit. So I'm thinking that's a probably this magnetic inversion 
uh, that's inside this thing so I don't think I'm going to mess with R4 at all. Now lastly I've got R3 and I kind of skipped it and it'll turn things down or up but I almost think like that's an overall voltage regulator deal and uh, because it, it does the same thing with the same effect doesn't make things super bright super dim it's just kind of a baseline underneath everything else so I think R3 I'm going to leave alone R4 I'm going to leave alone now uh, as I mentioned R1 didn't do much at very low settings so let's go ahead and I'm going to push this thing all the way down to minimum now I've got it set to off or not off but brightness wise this is uh, set to as low as it goes now uh, let's see Actually, I've got R2 maybe just a hair lower than what it started off. Okay, maybe that's a little closer. Now, okay, so, and where are we at here? Okay, so, with it all the way, with, with everything back the way it was normally, when you turn the gain all the way down, you really can't see jack. Okay, now, as I take R2 up, I can make this thing almost as bright as the high end. So this is like a baseline gain. Now, when I turn it way up, I also notice that I get illumination, and you can't see it on the camera, but where I have tape across the front sensor. So what I'm going to do is, that's, that's R2 way up. I'm going to set it back to normal. And now I'm going to, we'll actually, uh, we'll play with R1. Now R1, I, I just cycled that all the way, and I got nothing, absolutely no difference with the tube gain way the hell down. So now if I take R2, and you can see as I, with the light on, it actually, see that flicker and it tones down, that's like a protective thing. So let me take R2 up a good ways, and now let's tweak R1. Now R1 is having an effect. So R2 globally affects things, and if R2 is cranked up, then R1 starts to come into play even at low settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set R1 to neutral. R2, right, uh, let's see, right here is neutral for all the way down. Now, with that being neutral all the way down, I can see just a super, super faint glow on the tube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank R2 up a little bit, okay? I don't want it to be super bright because I want to be able to vary my tube brightness and all that stuff. So I've got it tuned up just a little bit. It's a faint glow, not real bright. And and we'll say we're gonna we're gonna set this to my baseline, okay? At at minimum uh, gain. Now I'm gonna brighten this tube up to maximum gain. And I know where I'm at on the on the on the that. So let's go ahead and. My maximum where I here's where I was at with with that right, and that's how much I brightened it. Okay, so I'm going to leave R2 up just a little bit. Now the R1 I didn't mess with before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with R1 now that we're at full brightness. Okay, and as you can see, the difference is. Well, maybe you can't see it on the camera, but what I'm seeing is the darkest darks as I crank R1 up become lighting. So I'm so I can pull more, I can pull detail out of the shadow, but I'm probably going to lose some contrast. So I don't want to necessarily crank that. I don't want to crank anything all the way because I think that would definitely be detrimental. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up a little bit. And in this case, what I what I basically did was I, I I'm taking it about the same as I did on R2 okay so let me to go ahead and turn oh actually you know what let me do this and see where we're at now if I crank the uh, gain all the way down on this device so okay now my gain is all the way down at the minimum and as you can see my cranking this R1 with the R2 gained up actually has a, a bit of an impact so I'm gonna go ahead and I don't want I, I just barely bumped the uh, the R2 down just a hair okay and again I'm doing this visually looking at dots on that I put on shit so uh, what we'll do is we'll do that and we'll leave the oh whoa, wait a minute okay so now that's 
all the way gain down in low light. Now this is bright light. I've got this light shining on the wall. Uh, I don't know if I need to put something white right here. Something that would represent a very bright scene. Okay, and that's gained down. So let's go ahead, gain this puppy all the way up. And that's brightness control kicking in. I don't know, what do you think? You think I got this thing amped up too much? I didn't tweak it much. Ah, oh, what the hell? We'll, 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 we'll put this back together and we'll see where we go with it. And I don't didn't take any comparative video going through it, but anyway, this is just me fucking around anyway. Okay, so we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the tape off this thing. If I can do this without shocking myself would be a positive thing. Okay, tape off. Okay, now gains all the way up. Gain is all the way down. Well, I think we're, that's as much as we're going to do. I think we upped a couple things just a tad, and we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we'll turn this thing off. I'm going to show you and take some pictures of where we set things, okay? So here we have it. Uh, again, it's very difficult for me to light it and see, so we'll take some pictures. But now if I line this up with the slot, you can see we're maybe 5 to 8 degrees off on R1 from where we started. And on R2, about the same. We basically rotated both these up R1 and R2 just a little bit just enough to where you know I put a dot with a fine tip marker on either side of the slot and that dots now almost lined up with our uh, with my marks I put on there so and that's really the only adjustment everything else I have left as it is so just R1 R2 R2 seems like it's more of a it'll adjust everything massively everywhere and the R1 plays off of R2. So if you crank R2 up, R1 has more of an effect. So we bumped R2 up, which is a global, and then we bumped the R1, which is a goes after which plays off of R2 or seems to be. I mean R1 doesn't seem to affect R2 as much as R2 affects R1. So there you have it. That's all I can tell you. That's the result of me messing around with this stuff. So what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the whole darn unit and put it back together and then I'm going to see how this thing works tonight see if it actually uh, does better than what it was doing and maybe long term see how long it works so there you go okay so here's our rig for being able to film the back of this Tasco NV250 now we're going to be filming the back of the tube directly because this thing is so darn long that even with my uh, even with my test rig that I've got that gives me a lot of flexibility uh, the farthest forward my quarter inch bolt hole I've got uh, to mount in front of a camera slot just for, for the quarter inch is way up here and I would have ran out of room if I'd left a rear lens on this thing so I pulled that off and uh, I could have moved it back a little farther but I was having issues trying to get the camera to focus on this view screen so this is as good as I could get this is a Panasonic GX85 which is what I shoot most of my tabletop video with and uh, here you can see not not the image isn't going to be as big as I would like but uh, that uh, at least I can at that point I can have it manual focus and I'll get a sharp image of the picture tube so that's what we're going to see uh, I might take some pictures too which will I can blow up to show a little better detail but uh, let's go outside in the backyard 
and take a look around a little bit and see how well this thing performs. Okay, here we are in the backyard looking at the back of the Tasco NV250 with an MX9644 tube that we've now uh, adjusted and tweaked to get better light gain. Uh, I can tell from looking at it that it's about 20% brighter uh, in my perception than what it was previously before we took the tube apart and actually messed with the pots inside. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, better and it's actually, this is on par with my other 9644 tubes now. So. Oh, there's a backyard with a six forty four tubes now. So oh, there's a backyard with a starry night. We have some ambient light from parking lots, uh, lights a couple hundred yards, two, three hundred yards away, and it's uh, no moonlight, so it's not a bad night to be outside, but not great either. And just to give you an idea, as we pan up a little bit here you can see the the line where uh, we're going up the tree where it, where it's illuminated from the from the distant parking lot lights and uh, the trees in the background and mind you now I can see those trees okay in the light but nothing like the brightness you're experiencing here so uh, there that is I'll pan across here a little bit too and uh, vehicle about 30 yards away. What I'm going to do now is turn on our illuminator. Now I have to adjust my gain on the camera or EV because literally it, it doesn't marry up well with the different brightnesses this tube has. So uh, now I'm going to, uh, okay now with the illuminator on low uh, that's married up pretty well. And there we are looking at the uh, Oops, is this wiggling around on me? Yeah, this is shifting on me. So, and there's our bench in the backyard. So, uh, there you have it. There's our bench in the backyard. So, uh, there you have it. That's that's uh, how this thing's looking now that we've done our modifications to it. I hope you enjoyed the tweaking the MX9644 video. As always, if you did like the video or got some value out of it, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. That's what keeps this channel going. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce. Please feel free to download it for personal or educational use, but commercial use is prohibited without my express consent. Copyright Phoenix Rising 2019.